Good morning everyone. Today we're going to create a picture of a London skyline. Um, here's one by the artist Rebecca Turner. Um, it's okay but I'm going to show you how you can make yours even better and I'm also going to show you uh, the techniques involved to make it. So to begin with the materials that you need are a piece of paper or indeed a canvas. The only problem sometimes with a piece of paper is it can become cockled uh, because you're going to be applying a lot of moisture to this. So the choice is yours. Obviously, uh, for economical reasons, I'm just going to use paper. Um, and you will also need, um, for this stage, I would say two brushes, a large and a medium brush. I'm using flat-ended because I'm addicted to them. And you'll also need, from your paint set, um, white, ultramarine, yellow, red. Okay, for this first stage. So, we get them onto our palette. And you just need a small quantity of each one. We're all guilty of putting masses out, but that's it. A little a blob like that. Absolutely perfect. Um... I'm putting them quite far apart, put the tops back on, they can dry up a little bit, uh, put my wipe down here. Now what I'm going to show you are the basic principles. What you do with them are completely up to your imagination and the content of this that can be yours. I'm doing the London skyline not necessarily the thing for you to do. You could do Boston, you could do New York or whatever. It's basically about silhouettes and that sort of thing. Right, next stage. So we take the large brush, put it in your jar of clean water. And to begin with, you're just going to cover the surface quite liberally with water. This is a really fun bit. And uh, the entire thing is in two different stages, and this is the first stage. Right, so we've got a little bit of moisture on there, and now what we're going to do is we're going to apply the light yellow on here, so cadmium yellow. I'm mixing it up a little bit. I like to use this fairly fluid. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just roughly going to place that in three areas and I'm just going to let it bleed through. Uh, now I think I'd probably like to have a little bit of orange so I'm going to mix the two together there and let's just bring that in a little bit and then I'm going to go on to pure red. Um, it's up to you where you put these on the scene. I would try not to make it one, two, three. I try to, you know, create a bit of interest in your in your background in this way, and the water will do its thing. Um, those of you who are in my practical art class will know that we've we've done stuff like this before with felt tip pens and, and letting it bleed in a beautiful manner. It's great fun. So now I'm going to I'm going to clean that, and then I'm going to apply my blue can have different brushes if you prefer. So this is going to come out. Let's just clean that brush off a little bit there. Always have your trusty bit of uh, paper with you here. So then I'm going to go into my blue, give that a little mix up, making sure that it's smooth consistency, smooth but watery. Add a little bit more water to it and then I'm going to bring that into it in that sort of way. Now, right, and finally we're going to put a little bit of purple on. So I've mixed my red and my blue together and I'm just going to apply this. Now, this is the fun bit. So what you can do now, you can either leave it like this or you can start to move the paint about the canvas you get some amazing effects here and the idea of the background is that it should be quite 
interesting and different and loose and unfettered really. So what I'm going to do now is I'm thinking I might like to try um, just add a little bit of uh, my white to the purple there. Just bring in there and I might just try a little bit of that in that side there. And I might just add a little bit more water. Right. Okay. Right. Okay, so I'm fairly happy with that. And that's the end of this stage. So we now leave it to dry. Time for a coffee. The London Skyline Part 2. So by now you will have your bone dry painting. And uh, if you've had trouble drying it out naturally, you can always use the hairdryer to achieve that. So you can go into this next stage. Now, as you can see on this one, I've been a little bit more playful here. You can see that I've had a few splots and things. In fact, you can be really free with this background. It's very expressive and loose. You can do all sorts of things with it and that's entirely up to you. You might really start enjoying doing these and do tons of background sheets, then choose the best one. Anyway, once you've got it, the next thing to do is you will need a ruler. Now, normally I ban these, but we will use the ruler, um, a rubber and a pencil, an HB pencil. Right. You will also need the previously provided uh, PowerPoint on reference material, which shows you um, some different possibilities and ideas. Now, we're going to do a little draw. Right, to begin with, you need to decide roughly where um, your buildings are going to start from. So I would put a line in to begin with here, just very lightly. Okay, that just gives me a ground. Make sure it's parallel to that side there. And then you can begin drawing things in. So I'm going to start off with the London Eye, for which I need my baby coffee cup, coffee cup here. So I put this on here and literally just lightly draw around that. Okay, now focusing on that, we, we want to find the centre of it. Um, we notice that the structure of it is like this, so it has almost like a pair of compasses coming out like that. Okay, and that creates. Okay, so on the London Eye, we put the supports in like that. I'm now going to, having used the coffee cup for my basic circle, I'm just going to mirror that going around like that. I mean, if you were doing this freehand, obviously it wouldn't be as spectacular as that, but you know, it's up to you what, how loose you want this. So uh, the next thing to do is to use your ruler. Now, if you want to, you can actually uh, do this straight off, say in um, a water-based felt tip pen, which would give you a reason. And I'm not going to go do too much of this, but you can, you can get the idea. Now, a few hints about doing buildings. First of all, Make sure that you don't bring in the Leaning Tower of Pisa into this unless you want that. So keep your lines fairly parallel to the edges of the page. Um, I've put Big Ben in here. Now you're just going to do very simple silhouettes here in this one. Um, so literally all you need to do is make sure you put in the two parallel lines to start with and then literally mark in where the different sections of the buildings occur. Right, uh, I'm going to put in the gherkin here, a space for this here, so that's going to come in here, looking at the shape coming round and let it just go down slightly into there, so I've got my gherkin there. Obviously we would be lost without a bridge so I have put this one into here. So we've got Tower Bridge here. Now, a little hint. If you are doing buildings that have a symmetry to them, just uh, literally help yourself by uh, putting in a little guideline 
from the top of that to the top of this so that it, it does keep you right about the proportion so literally now I can go on and I can put in this one um, the pointy bits to use the artistic term in that side there Right, so we're just going to finish off the, the top of St Paul's here. Um, going back to what I was saying about um, getting the buildings reasonably symmetrical. I say reasonably because it's not my forte. Um, I would like you to just break it down into simple geometric shapes. So for instance on here, you know, we will, if we start off with a triangle there, uh, bring that to the same height, bring your triangle into there curve that, curve that, etc. Um, so that you've got roughly the sort of shape that you need. And then you can always add finer detail later. So um, assuming you've got all your buildings in, going back to the London Eye, this is where I've decided to use my felt tip pen for this. And I'll just demonstrate a few more spokes here. So literally all I'm doing is probably wiser to turn your ruler over and then you can literally uh, move it without getting a horrible splodge. So that could go on forever and ever and ever till you've got the, uh, the number of spokes that you need. OK, so having done that phase now, we're going to just start to put the paint on. OK, so I've got some black acrylic here, which I've mixed previously and all I'm going to do now now I, I just thought before I actually apply too much paint it's worth inverting your picture um, and just drawing in your shapes as carefully as you can sometimes it's easier to work um, using on, uh, it's easier to get symmetry on one side than it is on the other so it's actually quite helpful to to try that little trick um, what I've also done here is, and I've kept it deliberately very, very light, is just marked in a rough approximation of where any shadow or reflection would be in the water part. I'm assuming this is a sort of Thames-like kind of thing, and um, I'm going to work very loosely on that. But I'm just giving myself a few kind of suggestions of where that is. So this is not completely drawn out, but it's enough because you don't want it to be a bit like a, too much like an architect's drawing. So next stage, working the right way up. So I've mixed my paint here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate a few alternatives. So make sure you have the pointy brush, right? Not the square ended one, um, because you're actually going to start looking at some Fairly careful brush stroke. Now on this one I am not going to put in um, any secondary detail. I'm keeping it fairly simple so that it's just a straightforward silhouette. Now I'm blocking in my main shapes here with, um, with the black paint. Um, there's, there's some bits I'm going to find all oh, right okay I could actually have a little bit more coming out here and then I am going to bring in that edge of the clock face there now I'm just going to put in a little bit of uh, final detail on the big pen and this all depends on how much time how much inclination you've got to to do this um, I've blocked that in and what I'm going to do is show you this next stage there where I've got fairly dilute paint and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put on a rough kind of reflection of this in the water but what I'm not doing is painting it exactly I'm just final stage okay so now we've drawn it just as a starting point, we're now blocking it in. I've finished off the uh, the Big Ben silhouette. I'm using this quite 
old brush. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to put a, a suggestion of a reflection in. Um, but what I want to do is keep it nice and loose. So I'm just going to let that dribble off a little bit there because I like that very open sort of loose approach and at this stage as I happen to have my other paints here um, what I might do is I might just at this juncture add a little bit more of my uh, a little bit more colour and let that dribble in as well because I don't want it to be too technical looking right so we can again we can play around with that to your heart's content but you can see the suggestion the uh, shadow of the silhouette is is much lighter but up on the top here I'll be making that much more dense and I'll just be working on the rest of it in a similar vein and hey presto you have your London skyline I hope you enjoyed doing it um, obviously you can be as tight and particular as you like or you can just be completely free with it. Uh, I'm going to show you on the PowerPoint one where somebody has added much more detail um, such as windows, such as patterning etc and changed this tone really as well. So bye for now. Good morning everybody. Well here it is the finished product. And as you can see, I've, <clears throat> as I suggested, um, got a little bit wild with some splatting and stuff on here, which gives it the impression of fireworks, I think. And then when that's completely dried off, I then um, marked in my solid skyline and then tried to get a kind of shadowy, reflective look. I've also used uh, felt tip pens for any minor detail. And um, watch out if they're water based. Uh, obviously make sure everything's dry before you do that and um, I just thought I'd show you while I'm at this another one which I did previously another kind of background as you know I'm completely enjoying the backgrounds more than anything else so um, basically I hope you have a wonderful Easter and I hope you have time to fit in a little bit of painting okay bye for now